Jenna, and this project began um, through the Disability Design Lab with Karen Nakamura. And um, I met a woman named Laura Millar, who's a blind sex educator, um, and we started working with her to design tactile sex education tools. Talking about the Jacobs Catalyst Grant, um, we had three main goals for what we wanted to do next, and that included um, getting something that could have more of a textural feel, because at that point, what we mainly had was a set of laser-cut parts that could give some sort of information, kind of like a raised line on, but not really in-depth information on like what does an actual person feel like, because people don't feel like laser-cut wood. Additionally, we wanted to try and incorporate some sort of electronic system, um, where you could like press things and get some sort of verbal feedback, so you didn't need an educator to be with you to use this and learn. We're developing a platform to release the models on. Right now, it's a prototype of a website that people could access, and on the website, there's various types of files hosted and different instructions. Yeah, I think the next steps for this is to really build it out to be robust and to make the model buildable, because that was one of our biggest goals in this project, was to have something that really most people who have access to a few building materials, whether that be cardboard and paper mache all the way to electronics and laser cutters could build out this model for them. I think on the topic of inclusivity, it's been very important since the beginning of this project to have um, user feedback and engagement with the people who are actually be using this at every level. And so that's been uh, being in contact with people at Technologie de Claude de Monterey and uh, at Lighthouse for the Blind and then ultimately doing a focus group this semester with the help of the Jacobs Catalyst Grant where we talked to blind educators and blind sex educators about uh, the sort of mid-semester prototype that we had and that was really impactful. An older woman who was probably in her late 50s and we, when we showed this model to her for the very first time, she, she ran her fingers all the way down it and for the first time was like, oh my god, I finally understand how all of these pieces fit together in a human body. I think that the thing that's really important to remember about this project for us is that what we're building are templates. Like what we're building are really um, like blueprints for other people to take the idea and take like all of the thought that we've put behind making something super simple and like you know, feel the right way and like as accessible as possible and like taking all of that work and going into their own wood shop or going into their own kitchen and making something out of people in the um, like all of the work that we've done is, is just a template that experience out for other people to create themselves. I just wanted to like, I, you know, the Catalyst Grant I think is one, one, like one step in the bigger, just uh, bigger line of support that we've had mm -hmm. in building this project. I think we talked about Karen Alcamore's Disability Lab, um, Christina from Technologico de Monterey who encouraged us to build uh, products and projects for the blind and visually impaired community was a huge help to us. Um, Chris Myers and Quan Ju mm -hmm. played a big role in helping us. Adam Hutz helped us uh, model all of these silicone parts. Yeah, was a huge help to us yeah. and all the support that we've had through Jacobs and the Adventure Lab. Um, it had been a huge help to us. Uh, yeah, and the Catalyst Grant, I think, really was um, what enabled us to continue on this semester with this project. Absolutely. Yeah.